Hi, my name is Raymond Camden. I am an evangelist for Adobe. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the Firefox DevTools. There is a presentation that I've given over the last year at a couple of uh, different conferences, and it talks about how to use the browser to debug client side issues. It's very heavily based on my own experiences and the, own, the, uh, the, the bugs that I run into. And in that presentation, I focus on Chrome. Uh, mainly because Chrome is my primary browser and I figure in a typical hour-long format I don't have time to show the same solutions in multiple browsers. Well, I do tell people to use different browsers because it could be very, very helpful. Uh, there was a case once where I spent an hour in Chrome trying to debug something involving app cache, I think it was, and for the heck of it, I switched to Firefox. And for some reason at that time, Firefox had better error reporting for app cache. And instantly, I saw what the problem was. So I tell people about that, but again, the presentation I, I give typically focuses on just Chrome. So that being said, uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to look at the example applications I built with all their bugs in them and stuff, and try them out in Firefox and use the Firefox dev tools uh, to debug them. I thought it would be a great way for me to kind of learn how Firefox does things and compare and contrast the different tools. So with that, let's get started. One of the first things I run into, or one of the first things I talk about, is how browsers by default will not show an error. So on screen right now, you're looking at a very, very simple web page. It has some JavaScript behind the scenes, and there is a bug in that JavaScript. So again, the default behavior for browsers is to show nothing at all. Now, if I had the dev tools open, I would see it immediately. I would know what's wrong. But I spend a lot of time on my laptop, and the dev tools take a good chunk of that space. So I don't actually run with my dev tools open uh, when I'm on my laptop. On Chrome, there's a couple of different extensions you can get that will actually put a little error flag right here uh, in this URL bar. I find that pretty handy because it makes it you know, pretty obvious and I know something's wrong. And at that point, I can open up my dev tools and start digging. I did some research and I was not able to find a Firefox add-on that did the same thing. However, when I mentioned this on Twitter, uh, Bradley Rosenfeld told me to check out the web developer uh, toolbar. Now, there is a web developer toolbar that's kind of old. Um, I used it a couple of years ago when Firefox was my primary browser. I haven't used it since then. This is actually something that's baked into Firefox itself. So if you go to Tools, and oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, if you go into Tools, yep, there it is. Web developer, developer toolbar. Now, right away, I like what I see here because it's very, very small. It's just right down there at the bottom. And if I reload this page, I will see, bam, right away, there's a little uh, red two here showing that there's two problems. And you can see with the mouse over uh, that it's telling me. And if I click on this, it'll actually open up the dev tools. And I actually find that more handy than the Chrome version where I have to use a keyboard combo to open it. I like the kind of instant access from here. I'll close it again. But this toolbar, and uh, in this blog entry, I'll, I will link to the docs on it, actually does a heck of a lot of stuff. It's like a command line for the browser. If you go in here and type help, you can see all the different things it does, including some really cool things, like for example, screenshot. So I can actually take a screenshot of this uh, web page and bam, it's saved into my downloads folder. That's really freaking nice. I could also look at the app cache and kind of see you know, if this particular page was using app cache, I can see directly from within there uh, different parts of my app cache. So this is just, I mean, it's just kick butt. It's really, really cool. And again, I love how small this is and kind of out of the way when I'm doing my work on a laptop. So that's the first thing that I uh, wanted to show you guys. So the second thing I want to talk about, uh, the second error, uh, or I'm sorry, the second use case is using the console. 
Uh, I am a big console fan. Uh, there is a integrated debugger in Firefox, just like Chrome, but most of the time I will do a lot of my work by just using console messages. Uh, in this case, I have a very kind of dumb application that's uh, using some basic jQuery to get some form, field, uh, form fields and do mathematics on it. The console output is just as nice as you would imagine it is in Chrome. Uh, the only thing weird, I guess, is that it's the first tab and in Chrome it's the last tab. Uh, there's also some really good filtering that you could do here. So for example, uh, if you don't like the warnings, and I, I noticed both Chrome and Firefox will do a lot of warnings. And typically there are things I don't care about, like some CSS that uh, may not be important right now. You can actually toggle all of these things off and on. Uh, there is CSS, and as you can see, I already have warnings turned off. I really like that fine grain control over what's showing up in my console. It's very, very nice. I won't actually go through the process of debugging this particular application. Uh, the whole point of that in, in the presentation was to, just to show the flow of the console and, and how it looks in Chrome. And as you can see, it's just as usable in um, Firefox as well. And you know what? I just noticed this filter. And that's really nice. I'm not sure if Chrome has that, but that is that is just freaking great. I like it. Uh, the other thing I like to point out about using the console is that I've always thought that Firefox handles uh, objects a bit nicer in terms of how it looks. So in Chrome, you'll typically get kind of like a, a compact JSON uh, picture of a complex object. But if we do something like Window and Firefox, you actually see that's a link. And you can click here and kind of drill through here. And I really, really like this view. Uh, there's also a filter in here so we can actually kind of focus in on location. Or I should say, how about document? And I can get, you know, more and more filtered in there as I need to do. So again, just an example. Uh, I, I really like how the output here is a bit easier to work with compared to Chrome and just one more nice thing. So the next thing I wanna show is some network examples. So I built a couple of examples that show broken things uh, involving Ajax. So let's actually go through a couple of these so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I will go into my first one where in this application, I'm taking two form fields and I want to do the math on the server. Now that's that's stupid. You don't want to do math on the server, but uh, it was basically a means for me to showcase how to debug stuff with uh, Ajax calls. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my network panel and we're gonna fire it off. Now, here's the first thing I wanna point out. The thing that is missing right away is the status code. Uh, maybe there's an option to turn it on. I couldn't find it. Um, in this case, the status code was a file missing, which I believe is 404. Yes, 404. And you can kind of see here uh, that this is a bad request. It's red. So you kind of get that something is wrong here. And now I'm seeing on mouse over uh, that it's 404. But I really do wish that they would show the status code in the... Um, in the table of contents as well. If we go into our next example, and in this case, the bug was a bit different. Uh, the code is expecting a simple value and you get a complex object instead. So I, when I give this presentation, I talk about how we can look at the JSON result and see that, oh, this is a complex object. It's not uh, a simple value and therefore my code is bad. So we'll run this. And we'll see, there's the object. This time it came back okay, and we can click the focus. Now note here that you can do some resizing here. One thing I don't like is that you can't, you can't make it even bigger. Uh, it's like they said that there's a min uh, width for this side, and that just kind of annoys me. Uh, there's times when I want a bigger window to see the response and work with it. That being said, I like the separation here on top. It just works a bit nicer here. Uh, there is the response, by the way. You can see it's uh, JSON. Uh, interestingly enough, 
they're formatting it nicely and I don't see a way to actually kind of convert this into a raw format. Uh, and that could be handy as well. But again, it is, it is easier to read. It's nice. It's okay. Another example I want to show you, this one's a bit different. Again, same uh, pretty basic math application here. And I'll fire it off. Now this time, if we look at the response, I thought this was really nifty. So look at this right away on top. Firefox noted that there was a parse error with the JSON response. Chrome did not say this at all. And if we scroll down, we can actually see that in this case, uh, the Ajax request was accidentally appending some, head, uh, some footer information at the end. And I like how, again, how Firefox just really makes this stick out. So again, pretty cool. Uh, something else I, I like to point out, these are all, or that re uh, request was an XHR uh, request. If you are doing a JSONP demo, and let me load mine up. Okay, that was a JSONP call. In Chrome, I believe you'll find it under the scripts tab. And in Firefox, it's actually under the HTML tab. And there is the JSONP, and there's a result. Uh, not really sure why it's HTML versus JS, but it's just something to keep in mind. It is not in the XHR tab. So moving on, there's something else that I want to show as well. And let me just kind of get in there real quick. So actually one more file here. So one of the things I talk about in my presentation is how I used to ignore the aspect of it that looks at the DOM tree. Uh, I just kind of assumed that, you know, I was building my HTML. Why would I need to care about where stuff is? You know, what this DOM is? But it's kind of obvious if you think about it. If you're doing anything at all that involves dynamic HTML, whether it's in the server or in this particular application, it's being done on the client side, you're actually spitting out dynamic uh, HTML and your DOM is dynamic and you can definitely screw it up. So I've gone ahead and hit the inspector tab and we can look at this stuff and I love the UI here. It's kind of nice and handy and you know, I love how it's, uh, it's, it's viewed on screen. I also have the inspect element just like Chrome and you can see it highlighting here at the bottom. And obviously this is live so we can kind of mess with this a bit just to see how things look. But what I want to show is this actually breaking. So this is a kind of a fake Twitter search. It doesn't really matter what I look for. And what happened is that the results were supposed to be zebra striped and this is definitely not zebra striped. So what I can do is actually kind of go into my results and look how it auto highlights and you know, I love the little border on top and I could see my results and this is what came out and these are my extra little p tags and if we actually look at the code it's going to be kind of obvious what it is and I'll just scroll down uh, but here is where I'm generating those results and note the bad HTML there. And essentially the browser just kind of choked and said, we'll just make that an extra paragraph tag. Again, not really rocket science, but I just really kind of dig how Firefox is doing the, the UI of this aspect here. And while I'm here, I'll point out the style editor, which I think is, is pretty darn cool. Uh, I like this focus. Um, I like uh, being able to do some editing in here. So, for example, we can change the min height of, par of, of paragraphs to 500. And I'm not sure if you saw it, but it actually did that live. Let me get it back to 50. I love that animation. It kind of makes it very obvious what I just tweaked. So, I think uh, that is all that I want to show. Uh, you know, again, there's, there's definitely more to the dev tools. Um, I just kind of focused on the aspects that I work with day to day mostly. Um, I could say that I'm thinking more and more about switching to Firefox as my primary editor. So, certainly not as my only um, browser. I should say browser, not editor. 
uh, but I really like what the dev tools are doing. Uh, one last thing, kind of the big thing missing here uh, is the resources tab. So uh, on Chrome, you could look at your local storage, your session storage, your web SQL, and your index DB. And there's no tools for that yet in Firefox. And I really hope they add that because I'm a big fan of local storage, a uh, big fan of index DB, and having tools like that built in would be nice. So again, that's the dev tools. There's a heck of a lot more uh, in the blog entry. I'm gonna give you guys some links to look at so you can look at more of the stuff in here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this look.